So instead of doing an analytical approach, we can also treat FER design as an optimization process. So how is that? Um, so very simple. So imagine we define our ideal frequency response. Let's say this is our desired response. And we call this D of omega. Omega. So and we could just say that the actual response is just slightly different. So the h of omega is the actual response. And that we define an error function e of omega. And it's done like the theorem is coming back to this w here. So then we've got our h of omega, that's our actual response, and that's our desired response. So and this defines here an error. And so the only thing what we need to do is we just need to minimize the error and then the result out of this is our h of n, so the coefficients of this h of omega here. So what is the approach to obtain the h of n, so the impulse response? And so the way this is done is um, is by by this following formula. So we define an error. And, um, and this error is defined defined as a maximum of w of omega. And then this multiplied with h of omega minus d of omega. So remember, this is our desired response. And this is our actual response. And this is here a weighting factor. So this gives us something like the, the importance of, of a frequency. Yeah, so if this if this weighting factor is high, then this frequency generates a high error here and will dominate basically this optimization process here. So the omega is running from 0 to pi. And, um, and so this one needs to be minimized with respect to h of n, so the impulse response. So this algorithm is quite a complex beast and um, I'm not deriving this, but we are just going to use it because there are design commands in MATLAB and Octave available. So this so this um FIR optimization in MATLAB or or octave. And so the function we use for this is called Remus. And so this, in order to understand this function, let's just draw again a diagram here. 
So we have our filter response here. And this gives us here again our F pass band and this is our F stop band here. And um, then we are defining amplitudes here to, for example, a 1 here and a 0 here. And that's the same idea. We do this here. So 100, comma, gives us the number of tabs. Then the next array gives us the frequency points. So let's say here 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and 1. Yeah, so this is here, the 0 here, and this goes up to 1. Remember MATLAB convention. So this is here, the 0 here, this is our FP, this is here our FS, and this is here the 1. And um, so now the next step is just we are defining the amplitudes. So that's 1, 1, 0, 0. And these are the amplitudes here. So and with that can already define define a filter. So let's try this here out. Let's just before we do this let's add here these are our frequencies. Okay, so let's bring octave back here and write B remass 100 and then 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. And then we do our frequency response B and have a look. So now we see this um, optimization process directly generates us this frequency response here. Could also have a look at the at the impulse response which is generated by this here in the bottom curve here. Yeah, so this is our impulse response of a low pass filter. So now the um, interesting aspect of this one is here that we can control the ripple. So the special aspect about the parks mclaren algorithms are the weighting factors. Weighting factors. So remember that our error function E was defined as w omega and then h omega minus d omega. So these these weight factors here, they basically can increase or decrease the error for a certain frequency. Increase or decrease the error for frequencies. Yeah, so this means that if if the weighting factor is high, then the error is more minimized here. More minimized, and if the if this weight is low, then then this frequency is less minimized. So this means, if this is high, this this means there's a that the ripple is low, and um, so if this factor is small, then the ripple is high at this point. So this means low. 
so we can some with these with these weighting factors weight relatively the ripple and um, so we give now an example of that so remember we had our frequency response might look like look like this where we had pass band ripples and here we've got stop band ripples so this means if we have a if we have our weight w here high and this one here for example w is low this means here we're getting here low ripple here and a rather high ripple here so it's a bit like a trade-off obviously the other way around also works and um, if we have the same values here then obviously the ripple is evenly distributed so let's um, have a look let's set here our our weights so let's say our w is high and um, and then for the stop band our w is low so that's the last argument here what we are setting here yeah so if i if i write this here here up again so then we have something like hundred and then these are our frequencies these were our amplitudes and so now we've got here 10 and 1 so these are our weight here that's the weight for the for the pass band weight for passband and this is here the weight for the stop band so what we're expecting is that the passband ripple is quite low and the stop band ripple is, uh, is higher so let's have a look if we achieve that so that's already done here so if we now looking at the frequency response of this year so that's our condition here with 10 1 so it's figure 2 um, okay so we have a we have a very very or virtually no pass band ripple here and the stop band ripple here at minus 80 so now let's let's swap this let's do the one here and the 10 here and we go back to figure figure one and we plot this so now we have we've put the weight on the stop band and so we see here that the ripples in the stop band are much smaller here so in this case roughly at minus 100 whereas here the ripples are at minus 80 and so therefore we have shifted this over here the pass band is not much visible here because the precision is good enough to, to have it more or less ripple free probably but we see a clear difference here how we can control the ripples and um, changing this through this weighting factor here